Hello again and welcome back to our course on Visio 2013. In this section and the next couple of sections we're going to look at a particular example of a drawing. We're going to look at organization charts or what are often referred to as org charts. The org chart has been a sort of mainstay of Visio since its earliest days and of all of the types of drawing that are drawn with Visio, I think that org charts must be one of the largest proportions and there must be thousands and thousands of people around the world who have used Visio to draw an org chart. Now apart from being a very popular drawing, the org chart has developed very considerably and virtually every new version of Visio includes major improvements to org charts and Visio 2013 is no exception. The situation we've got to now with org charts is that you can either draw them manually or you can use a wizard and in particular you can build them from data that is held externally. There are also many styling options, you can include photos and so on. And in the amount of time I can devote to them on this course, I can't possibly show you all of the features of org charts, but I am going to show you what I can in the time available in three sections. In the first section, that's this one, I'm going to draw an org chart manually. In the second section, we're going to draw an org chart using a wizard and data that's held externally. And then in the third section, I'm going to tell you a bit more about styling and customization options with org charts. So, let's get started. So, let's start with a file new. One of the options there is organization chart. If it's not shown on new or new page with the other templates, you can of course search for it to find it. On this occasion, I think I'm going to use metric units. Click on create. Now, the option is given there to use the organization chart wizard. And if you actually want to do this manually rather than using the wizard, all you need to do at this point is to cancel the wizard. I'm going to go through the wizard in the next section. And in this section, when we've done this manually, you'll have a good idea of many of the things in the wizard and what they mean. So all I'm going to do now is cancel out of it. And we're going to build this manually. Now, one important thing to note is that the org chart has its own tab on the ribbon. And we're going to be looking at quite a few of the commands on that tab during the next couple of sections. One of the first things to notice on the org chart tab is that you have a number of shape styles in the shapes gallery here. And one of those is currently selected. It's the belt style. Whichever style you have selected, that will dictate the name of the stencil in the shapes window. So currently the name of the stencil is Belt Organization Chart Shapes. If I selected a different style, I'd get, for example, Notch Organization Chart Shapes. And one of the key points here is that depending on the style you select, the masters and consequently the shapes are different shapes themselves. Now I propose to go with the belt, the default style at the moment, but bear in mind that you can change that at any stage and you can in fact change the style later on, as we'll see a little bit later on. Now the first thing we're going to do is to put a member of the staff at the very top of this organization chart. The organization chart I'm going to draw is for a software company, not a particularly big company, but it has a chief officer and then a number of directors who report to that chief officer. So I'm going to start with an executive, click and drag the executive shape roughly to the middle of the drawing page. Now notice that I have spaces there for text, the title and the name of, in this case, the chief executive officer, the CEO. Now to type in the title field, all I need to do is to type CEO and then for the name, select and it is Diane Dixon. So there's the first shape in my org chart. 
There are then three directors who report to Diane and the second level in this case will be the manager level and in order to get these directors correctly positioned in relation to Diane what I do is to take the manager shape of course it's called manager belt because of the belt style and I actually drop it onto Diane's shape and what happens is Visio automatically works out that the relative relationship between these two is that the new director, the person for whom I've used the manager shape, actually reports to the CEO, Diane Dixon. Now the title in this case is Technical Director. And the name of the Technical Director is Bryony Borelli. Now there are two more directors. The next one is the Director of Development and this director's name is Carl Churchill. So I just basically repeat that exercise. Again I drop the master onto Diane to indicate that this is somebody who is subordinate to Diane. And in this case the title is and the name is and then the third director I think that'll be me. I've always quite fancy being an accounts director, so that's fine. And I've got my top level of management, my three directors of the company. Now let me start to add to the drawing some of the members of staff who report to the three directors. Now if I take a position shape and say drop it on to Bryony, then this will be somebody who reports to Bryony. Put in the details in the usual way. And then if I want to put on somebody else who reports to Bryony, all I do is exactly the same thing again and drop position onto Bryony again. And Visio deals with that arrangement, making sure that both of those individuals are shown as reporting to Bryony. So let me put on the details of the second person. Now by now you should be able to see quite clearly how we can build up this org chart. Let's look at a couple of good tips and tricks to help to do this job quickly. This can of course become quite a big job. Org charts can get to be very big and very complicated. If you look in the stencil on the left, one of the masters there says three positions. And if I wanted say to add three people who report to Carl all at once, I could just drag that over drop that on Carl and automatically I now have three positions people who report to Carl and I can quickly fill those three in and in the case of Toby we're going to say that we have one person that reports to Toby so we just drag on a single position there and in addition Toby is trying to get another senior accountant so we actually have a vacancy if I drop a vacancy shape onto Toby, I'll see that we can see a vacancy appears there. Now one of the differences with the vacancy shape is that there is no space there for a photo. I'm sure you've worked out that those little icons with the head and shoulders are for people's photos. Well in the case of a vacancy we don't know who it is yet of course, so all we have there is the title that we're looking to fill. And then for the name, because we don't have a name yet, we're just going to put open to indicate that it's an open vacancy. Now you've already seen how to add the three position shape to speed things up. You can actually go a step further than that and there is a multiple shapes option. Let me just suppose that Cecile Lombardo, the maintenance manager, has a maintenance team that report to her. Let's put multiple shapes onto Cecile's shape in the org chart. Watch what happens. You're asked how many shapes you want. Let's suppose that I wanted to put on five members of Cecile's team that work for her. I could change this number to five. I could indicate that they're positions and I could click on OK and Visio 2013 would update the chart accordingly. Similarly I could indicate a number of vacancies or staff or managers etc. So that's a very flexible control. On this occasion I'm just going to cancel out of that. 
And the last one that I want to actually add here is an assistant. The directors probably all have an assistant, but let's give the CEO, Diane Dixon, an assistant. So take the assistant shape. The assistant is shown in that sort of offset out to the side way, which sort of says the person isn't really in the structure in terms of a reporting order, but has a special relationship, if you like, with the CEO. So the title in this case is PA for personal assistant, and the name is... So there we are, that's enough of my org chart to be going on with. In this section I've shown you the use of quite a few of the shapes in the stencil there but I do suggest you try to find the time to go through and try some of the others. And it's probably also a good idea to take a look at some of the other shape styles as well. Now while you're experimenting with org charts you should find that Visio 2013 is very good at making really sensible layouts but occasionally things do get a little bit confused and particularly where you have a very large number of shapes in an org chart you can sometimes find problems like shapes overlapping or perhaps almost touching each other. There is an option in the layout group at the left hand end of the org chart tab a relayout option and if you click on relayout what Visio 2013 does is to basically go through the layout it's got and look for what might be perceived as problems and then try to fix them. There's also another option there layout if you click on the bottom of that it gives you alternative horizontal vertical and side-by-side -side layouts. You might want to experiment with those and there's also this option best fit to page. If you've actually finished working on your org chart you put on the org chart everything you're going to put onto it and you just want to make it as good a fit to the page as possible you can try that best fit to page option. In this case Visio 2013 thinks that the layout it's got now is fine. And while we're on the subject of the manual creation of org charts, in the Arrange group, a couple of the options there, spacing, plus and minus at the top of the Arrange group. If you look at the chart and you just think, well, I just want it spaced out a bit more, you can manually do it by clicking that plus button once or twice. And obviously, if you want to close it up a bit, you use the minus button. Similarly, if you want to change the height of the shapes in the org chart or the width you've got height plus and minus buttons and you've got width plus and minus buttons as well and you can certainly use those tools to help you to get the org chart looking exactly the way that you want it to so that's how to manually build an org chart what we're going to look at in the next section is how to build an org chart using external data using the organization chart wizard so, please join me for that.